Si no lo leo, no me sirve de nada que lo escribáis. So, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Thanks for your patience. Uh, we are here following an extraordinary foreign affairs ministers meeting. Uh, the EU 27 foreign ministers have met this afternoon uh, following the events in Israel and Palestine. Uh, the Chavi P. Borrell will address you uh, with uh, introductory remarks, so then we will have room, I hope, for a couple of questions. Yeah, high representative, the floor is yours. Good evening. Uh, this morning we have had a very important meeting between the Gulf Cooperation Council member states and European Union member states to discuss of, about our cooperation, but also about the dramatic mom moments that we are living since last uh, Saturday when Hamas attacked. Israel with mass murder of civilians and kidnapping people. After this uh, meeting with our Arab friends and partners, I call a meeting of the Foreign Affairs Council. Some of the ministers were here in Oman, in Muscat. Others were from their capitals. I joined the meeting by video conference. It was an important meeting in order to share our views about the situation, where we are, what's happening in the ground, the reactions, and also to inform the colleagues that we are not here about the result of our meeting with the Gulf Cooperation Council. I, I can say that the, the Minister has endorsed our communication with the Gulf. The elements of this communication has been retaken by the ministers once and again. All of them said what we have said in the communication. Condemnation of the terrorist attack, condemnation of uh, any attack against civilians, release of uh, hostages, protection of civilians, respect of international law, humanitarian law, and it means no blockage of water, food, or electricity to a civil population in Gaza, to open humanitarian corridors, to facilitate people who has to escape the bombing of Gaza that could leave the country through Egypt, 
because the Israeli border is closed. Prepare the day after. It is the the fourth time in my life that I witness a war in Gaza, the bombing of Gaza and terrorist actions, which are being retaliated by Israel on their right of defense. All ministers insisted on the idea that this has to be done according with international law, humanitarian law. But we have to think also about uh, what is going on, what, what will happen after. For that, we have to increase our cooperation with the Arab world, and we have to recalibrate and upgrade the initiative that we took some months ago together with the Arab League, with Egypt, with Jordan, with Saudi Arabia, in order to revive the Arab peace plan and to remind the world that the Palestinian problem still exists, that to make peace between Arab countries and Israel is good and necessary, but also peace has to be done with the Palestinians. Otherwise, this violent, the cycle of violence will restart again. So we have to scale up and recalibrate our, our dynamic that we wanted to create in New York when 60 states attending the meeting declared that they were in favor of the two-state solutions because we don't know other solutions. So we have to work to make it viable, although 30 years after the Cam Davis agreements, it looks further far away than ever. In the meantime, we have to increase our humanitarian support to the victims of this uh, tragedy. And we have to reach out with uh, partners around the world. International community has to use this critical moment. This could be an awakening moment in order to re-engage with the problem of uh, Palestinians, Palestinians and Israel. Israel has the right to defend, but it has to be done accordingly with international law, humanitarian law. And some decisions are counter this international law. Today we had invited the two ministers, the ministers of Foreign Affairs of Israel and Palestine, and happily, finally, the participation informing the ministers could not be materialized. So the ministers discussed among us, and uh, the common denominator was a strong condemnation of terrorism, the inhuman uh, treatment. As I said, they replicated the text of the agreement, of the communication that we did this morning with our colleagues from the Gulf, the Gulf Cooperation Council. We discussed about uh, how to continue our relationship with the Palestinian Authority. It was a clear distinction between Hamas, the Palestinian people, and the Palestinian Authority. We consider Hamas a terrorist organization, and what they have done shows that certainly they behave like this. But the Palestinian Authority is another thing. Palestinian Authority is our partner. We don't deal with Hamas, but yes, we support and we deal and we work together with the Palestinian Authority. And not all the Palestinian people are terrorists. So a collective punishment against all Palestinians will be unfair and unproductive. It will be against our interest and against the interest of the peace. So the ministers discuss what uh, to do and how to continue our relationship with the Palestinian Authority and supporting the Palestinian people. And it was an overwhelming majority, overwhelming majority with uh, maybe two or three exceptions of the member states stating clearly that the cooperation with the Palestinian Authority has to continue. And the funding has to continue. And the payments should not be interrupted. Yes, the Commission proposes a review. 
some member states also wants to do a review of how this support is being implemented, who is receiving it, in order to be sure that uh, there is no link between our support and the Hamas terrorist activities. But this review should not be an excuse for delaying the implementation of our cooperation. It has to be done quickly, and I personally, with my services, will push for this review to be done inside the Commission and in partnership with the member states in order to ensure that uh, there is not this uh, risk of uh, leakage and funding behind the door any kind of terrorism activities. By the way, in four years after we are in our official positions, we discover that we have been funding Hamas terrorist activities. Someone will have to take a political responsibility for that. I don't believe it happens. But let's check it. So member states are in a continuous process of uh, verification of how the help is being provided to whom. So it's nothing extraordinary. Well, what is extraordinary is the current circumstances that maybe require a deep analysis. But some member states, many member states, insisted on the idea that this has not to be an excuse for delaying our cooperation with the Palestinian Authority and the payments should not be impeded by this process. And I personally, with my services, will take care that this review is being implemented in the shorter possible terms, because our will is to continue supporting the Palestinian Authority, something completely different from Hamas. It will be a big mistake in this critical moment to stop our support to the Palestinian Authority. It will be a mistake because it will be the best present that we could give to Hamas. And it will jeopardize our interest and our partnership with the Arab world. Since yesterday's announcement, it has been a wave of people asking the reason for that and asking the European Union to continue supporting continue humanitarian support, for sure. This is not uh, on the discussion. The Commission in charge this morning has explained clearly in the meeting, Janis Lenarczyk, that humanitarian support and the communication of the Commission is state clearly that this is not on the discussion. What we are talking is about the cooperation to the development, cooperation for public services, financing of the activities of the United Nations organizations, who provide services to the Palestinians. We will check, we will review, member states will do the same thing, but once again, the overwhelming majority of the member states consider that we have to continue our support to the Palestinian Authority and the payments due should not be delayed in a moment in which this organization is in a critical moment because the Palestinian people are also suffering. All in all, this, this barbaric uh, and terrorist attack that has caused so many casualties, so many people being killed, that has provoked a re reaction from the Israeli Defense Forces, which also will cause human suffering. We insist on that uh, this has to be done according with humanitarian law, but the fact is that at that moment the casualties in Gaza are also increasing. 150,000 people are internally displaced, and its humanitarian situation is dire, so we will have to support more, not less, more. This is, I think, the 95% of the positions expressed by member states here, and this is mark the way we have to work. These are sad days, but um, it may be an occasion to put again on the table 
the quest for peace in order to avoid another cycle of violence. Thank you. Thanks a lot, High Representative. So we have time for a couple of questions. The lady, please introduce yourself and the media outlet for which you work. Thank and I'm already from Times of Oman. First of all, um, welcome to Oman. We're happy that you could make it here, and we hope that you had a wonderful um, stay. So you said that um, Israel had the right to defend with following the international law. You think that they have been actually following the international law with all the things they've done to the Palestinians? As I said, as I said, some of the actions, and the United Nations has already said that, as cutting water, cutting electricity, cutting food to a mass of civilian people is against international law. So, yes, there are some actions that are not in accordance with international law. That is a critical moment in which uh, the reaction to the barbaric attack perpetrated by Hamas provokes a situation in which we have to remember that uh, the right to defense has to be done inside international law, uh, which everybody has to abide to international humanitarian law, and the United Nations and myself, we have pointed out that in some cases this is not the case. Thank you. Second question. Yeah. Uh, hello, my question, uh, can I ask you Arabic? Um, Arabic, I'm Arabic. sorry, no. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, my question is about matter of the Qarab and Yatim that the Dufa Italia in the Musaada of the Tamil and the Tijan and the Tahadi Rubi in the Mashari al Falastini. So, the Tani is a Aspah to Dufa Mustahaka. We in the game of the Mustahaka. I will he is asking when is the next batch is going to be paid to the Palestinians? When is the next? The next uh, tranche of, of aid to the Palestinians. Well, the aid to the Palestinians flows by different, different lines. We have different projects, different programs. We support different United Nations institutions. We support different ONGs activities. Our support to the Palestinian Authority we are the biggest supporter of the Palestinian Authority in the world. It's about 600 million euros a year. There are several lines. I don't know exactly when is the next payment to be done, but the important thing is that it's not going to be any structural delay of the cooperation and payments. It will be a review, but it will not, it will not be a suspension. There is a second part of the question? Yeah. Commissioner Vahili's yeah. statement yesterday regarding the suspension of development aid. Well, you know, uh, uh, I cannot say everything that has been said inside the Council because there is a, a certain discretion and in our deliberations not everything has to be public. But I think I already said that the overwhelming majority was against the idea or the proposal of uh, suspending the payments to the Palestinian Authority. This is the thing that matters. If uh, they consider that it has to be done a review, we'll do a review. But this doesn't mean that the uh, support to the Palestinian Authority is being suspended or the payments cancelled. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot to everybody. Have a nice evening. Please. It's really very tough.